Hi, Dennis Weiss, Eagle Communications. Welcome to our town. The backdrop you're looking at on camera is magnificent. We're in Solomon at St. John's. No, nope. Immaculate Conception. Immaculate Conception. Of the Blessed Virgin Mary. I never would have got that. That's why we have <laughs> Bailey and Tracy in the middle and Father John Wolesky. Wolesky. No end. No end. No Wolesky. Wolesky. Perfect. All right, we're going to spell that for you so you don't mess it up like I did. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. Glad to be here. So I'm pretty sure I know what Father John does. He's the father priest. I, I'm, here. I'm a pastor here and also in Chapman and uh, do about 20 hours a week uh, over at uh, the hospital in Salina okay. at this point. Daylene? My title is Parish Life Coordinator. Um, as well as over in Chapman, they have a Parish Life Coordinator that works over there as well. And we both work with Father John um, okay. to run the parishes. So you're the person responsible for making sure stuff gets done. So when Father John shows up, it's done. Exactly. And after he leaves, it's done. Exactly. And then when in between, it's done. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the way life I try works. to do that. Okay, so this is the first show I've shot in a church okay. oh, that yeah. I can think of. Wow. Yep. For Dave and I, certainly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, glad to be here. Thank um, you. As I listen to the echo of my voice in the in the cathedral here, really, uh, the rounded nature of what's coming back to me in sound is glorious. We have a glorious view. But there's a glorious reason you work here every day, so tell us what you do at a Catholic church. Well, we try to have a daily mass here that the people who uh, wish to come during the week, of course, on we have a Mass on the weekend, on Sunday, and uh, uh, it's a place of worship. And these old churches, where, like you say, there's a lot of uh, space here. They were made for uh, the organ. Right. You can just hear it echo when you, when right. you clap. And right. uh, it does a good job. Uh, we've had to work since we've been here to have a good uh, sound system, mm -hmm. which uh, was put in locally, and uh, they've done a good job with it. Uh, when did you come here, Father John? I came here in 1999. Yeah. 99, okay. So you've been here a while. I came to Kansas in 1992, um, and some of my first friends, uh, Jerry Luthai, who's mm -hmm. a no, farmer Jerry. rancher up that way, and his brother, in law uh, Robert Aylward and mm -hmm. his wife Kathy Aylward and the yes. Aylward family they, and they're very attended much. here for yes. a long, long time. Yes. Uh, as I walked in today, I saw Ryan's, I saw Reardon's, things on the wall, things. Uh, so this very, anybody that's been around Solomon can walk in here and look and know that this is a community place built with and by and for community people who are still doing well in our community today. And one of the um, community members, uh, Father John Leahy, was actually, when he was semi-retired, came here and more, I was privileged to work with him. I started full-time in 1997. Okay. Um, Father Leahy was already here and started then. Um, actually became parish life coordinator in 2001. I started out as a pastoral associate. Now you have this sheet so you can give me the answer. When was this building built? This building was built in 1883. And prior to that? Prior to that there was a little wooden church that mm -hmm. was kind of an L-shaped and it was born, uh, it was built in the 1860s. Was there a fire in between those two stories? No, or I think they just, just rebuilt. A rebuilt. Okay. Um, there was a fire, there, a couple of them, uh, underneath the church, okay. underneath the altar. Uh, there's a fire that nobody remembers about, but they must have had a real problem with a boiler at one time, oh, and okay. they were lucky they didn't lose the whole thing. I see. And uh, we could go downstairs and look at it if you'd like. <laughs> but the, the, the timbers are up there. It's, it's pretty. It's uh, we're, we're low here, and uh, yeah. it floods around us, and mm -hmm. all of our basements kind of. Uh, let the water in and out. Yeah, so we have no sure. real problems in the long term because we're still standing, Isn't but in the basement of the house and in here. So we don't have a lot of storage space and uh, we can't put much down there. It's, it's kind of gloomy and spooky yeah. down there. But uh, So I'm trying to uh, remember accurately Jerry Luthai's words, but I'm, I'm 
thinking, you know, we said the flood of 53 was a real doozy, so maybe 51, it was. 51, probably. Okay, mm -hmm. I knew, I was hoping one of you would fix that. <laughs> so, but it, it, it's a conversation and a joke, but yeah, the river's right over there. The and, and, and the 51 flood is also the year that uh, Salina decided to build a dike around the city. Mm -hmm. See, and, and it flooded, I think, in, um, not in the, 95, I think. 93. 93. And we didn't get any water here in the church now. The water mm -hmm. was up, but we didn't get any water in the church. And the one thing that I, I always tell people is that the church is built on a floating foundation. Um, we have the highway right next to us yeah. and we have the railroad, railroad track, track. And so it, it moves. <laughs> the back part, which got added on later, is not. Mm. Um, but the, the whole church is on a floating foundation, which has always interested me as well. So Father John, you took me on a quick tour through oh. three generations of building here. It's, it's amazing to see. We made it all the way to the, the copper bathtub upstairs <laughs> over there. So, it, you know, it's amazing to look at that. Yeah. And it, but it's, it's also, I guess, you know, with a show, Father John has always been about progress. It's about the good news, mm -hmm. the good things that are mm -hmm. going on. And uh, so it's kind of fun to be able to say, okay, I see a lot of investment here over the years by the community to make this into the building it is. But the best good news of this church is the good news. Mm -hmm. You know, that Christ is risen indeed, mm -hmm. and he did so for the sins of, of forever. Uh, so t talk to me about your mission. Tell me what you love about working here on behalf of the Lord. Well, what, what I like about it is the fact that by having somebody like Daylene uh, here, uh, I don't have to worry about the paperwork and the computer work and I can work with the people and uh, uh, can have the time to go to the hospital and uh, see those that are sick and, uh, and, and do a job there. Uh, and I also appreciate that over, over in uh, Chapman too. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's freed me up to do what I was ordained to do. And there just aren't enough of uh, we ordained priests around at this point in time to, to touch all the bases that we would like to. I mean, every place would like to have a church service uh, between nine and 10 o'clock on, on a Sunday morning. And uh, mm -hmm. there just aren't enough folks to do it at that time. And so, you know, even when we have more in large towns, uh, we have a, a group of people working together. It, it's still, you have to meet uh, a lot of times and uh, be very uh, sure of, of when you're gonna do this and how you're gonna do it. and. Uh, get all the preparations. It, it isn't something that I do by myself. It takes all kinds of people okay. uh, that uh, keep the church clean, that the choir that practices, the organist that plays. Uh, it takes somebody to put out the bulletin, to get it into the computer and to put it on the website. Uh, you know, just a lot of pieces that need to fit together. So the Lord was the only uh, servant leader that was able to feed us fish and bread without baking <laughs> or fishing. The, the rest of us have to do it the mankind way. And that effort is comes in a community fashion, right? Oh, yeah. so, uh, so who plays for you? Who's the musicians? Mary Flora is our organist. Okay. Um, and I fill in. All right. I try to fill in. There you go. Try to fill in. I'm kind of a jack of all trade, a master of none of oh, it. I'll bet you master um, a few. <laughs> um, and we have several choir members that okay. come in and, and sing and stuff. And I do more than just paperwork. Um, I, yes, I do the paperwork and all of that. Yep. But I, my, I have a ministry here too. Hmm. Um, and that is, you know, I do all the marriage prep, baptism prep. I work with annulments. Um, I work with our religious ed coordinator, Stephanie Tiernan, to make sure that that's running smoothly. Mm -hmm. um, I do RCIA, which is right of Christian Initiation of Adults, okay. um, which is where we bring in the adults. Like at Easter time, we have one coming in at Easter time this year. Mm -hmm. We do that at the Easter Vigil. So not only am I, am I in the office, but I'm also with the people and making that connection and building on those relationships. So yeah, we, we took a little cut right there. And here's why we took a little cut. 
Father John got a pastoral care call on his cell phone, as my son <laughs> used to say, cell phone. And we had to take that call because it was important. And so we took it and we're back talking here in the Solomon Church. Um, and, and you were talking about pastoral care, I was talking about it, and you were talking about your ministry of ministry. doing things and helping people. And, and you know, we, part of my job is building that relationship with parishioners um, and working with them. They help us, we couldn't do this by ourselves. Sure. Um, and it's kind of like that relationship with the Lord. You know, you build on that relationship of the Lord and, and that's what we are about is building that relationship, being disciples of Christ because, that, because of our baptism, we are called to be disciples. No matter what church we go to, yeah, you are baptized. Very, very, very true and, and, and very um, important, the mm -hmm. understanding of that to the person yes. that attempts ministry. So I'm always uh, interested as I, I talk to anybody of, of, about the Lord and are about ministry and, and, and I watch and listen to them. Uh, that is my evaluation, I guess, not judgment, but my evaluation of where we stand as Christians uh, in our battle here uh, to, to prosper the Lord's gospel throughout the world. Um, it, it seems to, to me to be harder every day. And as soon as I say that and think that, I think the exact opposite is true. Because of what is going on in the world, it's actually probably easier every day because we have a clear and present opportunity to speak to real and clear human problems with the gospel. And whether we choose to do that or not, it's up to us as individuals. Well, and I, I think about, uh, when you say that, I, I think about St. Francis of Assisi. I had uh, Franciscan sisters teach me for uh, about 12 years now, we said they had uh, 12 years to play with my mind. Uh, but, uh, you know, St. Francis said, preach always when necessary, mm -hmm. use words. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, I think that... Uh, so for uh, the, so for the uh, less inclined to understand that, explain it. Uh, the, by the way that we live our lives and the choices that we make uh, with the gifts that God gives us uh, ought to show in the way that we, and we use the word spend as most of the time in our culture today it's talking about money. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about the gift of time is the most important thing that we've got. And as I mature, we don't want to use that word old, uh, we realize that our time is shorter and using that time uh, that would be good for myself, the community, and the Lord. And uh, it's really about the Lord first, as you, you very well put it. But I, I think, too, we, we need to think about, you know, we, we're here in the church and, and what we've got here. You know, behind us here, we have the, uh, the Last Supper uh, that is in many, many churches. But this, original, this Last Supper originally came from the back altar and was moved forward and put in a new altar when they, we started facing the peoplers. It was a study right. of history within our, within our church. Mm -hmm. And uh, I look out here at the altar rails mm -hmm. that were once sitting right here to block everything off. We couldn't right. even be sitting here. And uh, they were put in here by Father Leahy and uh, some of the people that rescued them from a barn. Would you, would you mind, again, doing a bit of an explanation when you said we turn to face the people? That's a historical fact maybe most people watching do not okay, know about. Okay, well, when you flash the picture up on the back here, that high altar was what the, the priest was facing right. that. Right. And uh, he, uh, was, he had his back to the people a good part of the time. And that changed. I've been a priest 52 years. Uh, that changed right before I was ordained. As a matter of fact, I had an ordinary, or, ordinary old, a pastor that wasn't old when I think about it now, but he seemed like it then. But he wasn't going to turn the altar around for my first Mass. And I said, we're not learning it that way. Uh, you know, and finally, uh, I was home at Christmas, and he gave me no indication of anything, that it was going to do anything. And finally, he uh, told my dad one day after Mass, uh, in about February, I was being ordained March the 12th of 1967. And he said, we're going to put some temporary altar. You can come up and help us, Al, as we told my father. And uh, 
you know, you remember those kinds of things. Sure. But uh, yeah. the many, many of the people, including the clergy, were not real happy about changing. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, change always comes a little harder as we get more mature. And yeah. uh, so, uh, you know, that's one of those things we have to do. And, uh, people have adjusted to it, I think, fairly well. And it was, the Mass was in Latin at that time, too. And then only so how's your Latin today? It was always terrible. <laughs> <laughs> My, yeah, so no, that, you, I couldn't even answer that question <laughs> anyway with a positive answer, none, zip, zero, none. I only learned enough Latin to get by a short bit of science and that's, that's, all, that's it for me. I know I think a little bit a, of music and okay. that's it too. I've always said there's a reason that language died, a natural death, let's not disturb it. Well, there's some other reasons too, but that's another story, but World War I and World War II right. got rid of second languages, and yeah. we're, we're paying the price for that. In we some are, ways. indeed. So uh, every time we, we get a, a, a show uh, going here, I, it turns into three shows. <laughs> and you just turned it into three shows right there with that one phrase. So we are living history. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we don't think about it every day, mm -hmm. but by saying we're living history, we're also living with the consequences of prior history. Mm -hmm. and, and many of us live in a comfortable state. It doesn't require us to think about the past much or what we paid for it or what the price we're paying today for it is. But the price of that movement between World War II and World War I and World War II and the loss of the second languages, that has an economic impact, it had a social impact, it mm -hmm. had an impact in the way the countries were redrawn after World War II. All of those things are, are, are points of potential and in fact conflict between human beings today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there are prices for that. And mm -hmm. we, we don't talk about that much, I don't think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so um, the long name you gave for your church, now somebody has to have a short name for this building, what is it? Immaculate Conception Parish. Immaculate Conception Parish. So when you walk in, and this, really short is ICC is what I do. ICC, okay. <laughs> but Immaculate Conception. So, so when you walk in the door, we're going to get some B-roll of that entryway mm -hmm. because there's some significance there. But when you walk in here, uh, with uh, Father John's at the hospital somewhere, and you're you walk in here to get things done today, and you walk through the doors, what do you see and what do you think about this institution in your day? Um, it has changed me um, because it's the ability to uh, come in, like if I have to change out missilettes. Um, he offered one time, well, we should help you. And I'm like, no, that's my prayer time. <laughs> that's my time that I can draw myself mm -hmm. to the Lord and pray, whether it's practicing music, um, playing the piano, whatever it may be, um, changing out the banners, the decorations, it's spending that quiet time uh, with God. With that being said, this is a building. Mm -hmm. um, our relationship with God goes beyond this building. It, as he said, we have to live our faith. That's evangelization. We go out of here to live our faith. Coming in here to mass, whether it be on a daily mass or a Sunday mass, hopefully when they walk out that door, it's to walk out and live their faith in a better way and to become more Christ-like, which is what we are called to do. So uh, from uh, the Hebrew perspective, um, when the Lord asked of us to build a tabernacle and mm -hmm. built it out of skins and cedar wood and different artifacts, but, but uh, I think recognizing for the created human that he was directing to a task that putting something up that we can see and touch mm -hmm. and choose to uh, follow direction and worship in is an important part of being a human. It mm -hmm. must be because he gave it to us and he, everything he gives us is a good thing. So it, I've always felt, I read your sign on the door when I walked in, it said, first line said anyway, we're sorry that you've come to pray and found our doors locked. And then it went on to describe something mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. I didn't read. But I do, even I, remember the day that the church doors were never locked. Um, 
and uh, my time on the East Coast in the, that area of the world, I used to walk in a lot of old churches and b because of what you described. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. It's that opportunity to hear as soon as you even make a sound, you hear that feedback come back to you. So whatever, whatever sound comes out of your mouth, good or bad, comes back to you. Mm -hmm. Is that not kind of important to understand, mm -hmm. right? Old churches do that better than anything. They well, remind us what we put into the world comes back to us really quickly. And in uh, Psalms uh, 45:10, you know, it says to be still and know that I am God. Right. And, you know, to come into that church, you hear your voice, but at the same time, it calls you to be quiet and to be still. One of the really um, rich traditions that I love about the Catholic faith is that we have the kneelers. Um, I'm a convert, so when I go into a different church that doesn't have the kneelers, that's the one thing I miss, is getting down on my knees and being able to pray to God and, and centering myself and listening to Him and being still and knowing that He is God and that He has everything under control. We don't, we're just humans, but He does. How much time we got, Dave? Five minutes, two minutes. I was afraid we're running out of time. <laughs> so uh, as we wrap up, and we'll let Dave get some interesting B-roll here, Father John. Um, this is not a job. This is your life. It's a calling. Uh, it is so, a calling. So, you know, all of us, I think, if we're doing what we're supposed to anyway, there's an area of calling in our life. But I, I want to thank you. I thank you. <laughs> for inviting us here, You're right? Welcome. Um, You're welcome. It's important to be here. It's an important time of year to be here. It's an important reminder that we're coming up on, on the Passover season of mm -hmm. which the Christian church has celebrated as Easter mm -hmm. for many generations. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, pa the Passover time for me, that's when uh, God reminded us who pays for sin mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. who he did it for. And Easter as it's celebrated today is the same message. Mm -hmm. It's reminding us who pays for sin and who he did it for and how he did it. So thank you for bringing us in. Thank you for having us. And thank you for being here to serve all these years, both of you. You're welcome yeah. and all are welcome. All right. Come. All right. You We'd talked about, you. You talk about uh, uh, walking that journey. We are the Stations of the Cross. Right. Yeah. Tell us that. Well, if you haven't been in the Catholic Church in Solomon, you should come and uh, you can find out when it's open, where? Um, on that little sign that you were reading, my cell phone is on okay. there. Right. Um, feel free to, if, I'm, if my car's not out front, okay. knock on the office door. If I don't answer, then call, and okay. I will get somebody down here to open those doors. You need, you need to, if you love architecture, you should come here. If <laughs> yes. you love churches, you should come here. If you love to see what 100 years of community can do for the, for the cause of Christ, you need to come here. I'm really glad I did today. My name is Dennis Weiss. I work for Eagle Communications. We're wishing you a terrific day.